number nine. I have Sam Morgan, Scarlett Gordon, and Carissa Carner with us today. And we are going to announce eight new Hotness Unleashers today. But first, we have a little housekeeping to do, of course, as always. Uh, I need to call out our official sponsor, which is my employer, Infuse Media. And we are dedicated to demand performance delivered and what this means for mostly B2B tech companies, which is who I pretty much work with exclusively, is that we help to fill the demand uh, pipeline and get a lot of interest and build a brand and do all the other good stuff that uh, the B2B SaaS companies need, want, and love. So thank you to Infuse Media for being our official sponsor and advocate for this program. Um, as well, I wanted to make sure that everybody knows that Hotness Unleashing is occurs when we pay attention to people and their work in an intentional way. Hotness gets unleashed, and that's what this is. It's just a fun way to say it. So it's not weird. It's not complicated or anything like that. It's just, let's just have a good time. So with that, I am going to introduce our first guest who is going to give us, oh, I don't know, just a little uh, just a little plug on what she's been working on and what's coming up for her and why, um, you know, why she's here and all that other good stuff. So let me pull up her slide. Carissa is going to go first. Hang on, hang on. I'm getting there. I am getting there. There we go. Carissa, you are on stage. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trevor. It is such an honor to be here. I just saw someone post, let the fire begin. So the fire is kindling. It is lighting up now. Um, I'm Carissa Karner. So I'm a, a psychotherapist, a licensed psychotherapist, and I'm also a leadership and public speaking coach. And what I do is that I weave together positive psychology, something called EMDR, if you're familiar with that, and world-class speaking skills and leadership strategies to help people in leadership just clear out anything that's standing in the way of fully embracing and feeling empowered in their leadership. And I help people with their speaking skills, their communication skills, and to be uber confident and aligned with their goals and where they want to go. So I do have an event coming up that you see on the screen. It's a three day live event. It's by invitation only. And if this is something that you're wanting to do, if you want to increase your leadership skills, you want to understand where your strengths are and how to bring them out and get aligned with your biggest goals, I want to invite you to apply to come to this event. I would absolutely love to have you. These are strategies that I typically teach my high paying clients only. So it's going to be so much fun and full of value. I, you know, I'm sure it's going to be fun and full of value. And I mean, I, one of the, one of the reasons I, I invited you in here, Chris, was because Frankly, I like to hear you talk. I mean, seriously, you have like the best voice of anybody out here. And I don't know if you guys can hear it, but Carissa's <laughs> mic and her whole setup and everything else is totally pro. And I love that. I see you've got, you, you, you talk about this stuff. Like, you know, how do you, how do you speak in public? What do you say? How do you do that? And I remember the first time that I, I really saw you and it was a video about practice, mm. right? And it was a while back. I remember when, but it, it, it was, a, it was practice and, and, and I was like, oh, yeah, that I got, I got it. And you were so confident and so clear and so articulate. And the message was so tight. I just was like, man, I got to know more about that. I got to know more about that right now. And I started following you and your content just came, kept coming through. And then I started bugging you about how to do the um, do the, the, the captions properly. And yeah, so I've just really, and then Linky, right? You get that, you get credit for that too. So man, <laughs> you just like had a big impact on me. And frankly, I'm going to upgrade my, my mic because- Clearly, I got to take it. This and there is another level here, right? And I'll keep trying to improve continuously. So, man, I am so excited that you're here, and I can't wait to hear about your hotness unleashers today. And man, that, I might have to sign up for this uh, this event. So, I'll, uh, I'll make sure I get on your invite list as well because that looks really exciting. But who's not interested in big promotions and big races? I mean, gee whiz, right? We get exactly. all the help we, we, we need to get all the help we can get. Jeez, man. So. Thanks for coming today. I know you're really swamped and busy and going crazy because you've got, you know, psychotherapy going and leadership coaching going and EMDR. And I, I've done a little EMDR too. I know like mm, this. You know, it's that, powerful stuff. Uh, it's, it's it, very it, it, powerful. It, it can be, uh, it can be an interesting experience. So uh, with that, we are going to move on to Scarlett. And so Scarlett um, Gordon is our next guest. Let me get her page up here. 
There we go. All right, Scarlett, you are on stage. All right. Thank you, Trevor. I'm so excited to be here this morning, but I have to say following Carissa is a tough act. <laughs> um, <laughs> being, coming right behind one of the top leadership public speakers and coaches on LinkedIn. Oh my gosh. Um, but I don't know about everyone else, but I'm going to be signing up for that accelerator program as soon as this is over today, because that looks amazing. So I don't, why wouldn't you do that? I mean, geez. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I'm no. Scarlett Gordon. I'm the director of business development for Arise Virtual Solutions. I'm new in my role. And what excited me about the opportunity with Arise is that we're revolutionizing the CX gig economy economy through our virtual solution center. What does this mean? We actually offer opportunity for the people who are so disenfranchised normally, that would be stay at home moms, disabled people, military spouses that move so frequently, it's hard for them to get established in the workforce. And they have the opportunity to build their own business and become a business owner through the Arise Virtual Solution. And the CX gig economy is so hot. We're like the Uber of the customer experience space. So um, I joined Arise at the perfect time. We've got a great leadership team. We have big goals and we're just having a lot of fun. So I'm really happy to be with Arise and also to be here with you guys this morning. We're having a blast. No and kidding. Now <laughs> fire. <laughs> now, I've got a lot to say, Scarlett, that I just want to put all out, out here on the table because this is my show. I can talk as much as I want. So <laughs> the, the, the fact is you like you burst into my world a few months ago, just like on fire because you've made this claim like, look, I got into SaaS, right, as a, a senior salesperson, right, despite the the ageism that exists in that industry um mm -hmm. the the sort of the all of like we're young we're hot we got it we know all the answers stuff and frankly i think that you know i'm a 25 year seller right I, it's it, there's been i've been through some stuff and you've been through some stuff you have seen things right you bring experience and a lot of the ideas that are so-called new aren't they're not new you know they're just like new to them and it's it I, I was just so excited to like to see like a real live human who actually broke into SAS from not right from something mm. else. <laughs> and and then, you know, you have just turned out to just to be like massively engaging and always helpful and always just like, yeah, you know, we got this thing. And then, you know, you were working at Threat Locker there for a while and it was so fun to engage with you. You know, when I went to Black Hat and I was seeing all their ads and stuff everywhere and, yeah. You know, that was that was terrific. But I also, you know, I'd like you to tell us the story a little bit about ain't no one going to control my linky. So <laughs> I, I want to hear about that because that that really came through strong. Um, and that was not that was right before you went to Arise. Um, we don't need to name names, but I want to hear kind of what that experience was like um, and and how I don't know how you responded to it just sort of emotionally and 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 and. I don't know, just kind of your, your, your that reality. Well, as you said, Trevor, you know, we're salty old sales dogs, both of us. And <laughs> we've been around a long time. And when I transitioned into SaaS, I was seeing posts every day saying you can break into SaaS even if you're as old as 30. We see 30-year-olds every day breaking into SaaS. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I could be a 30-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really, at the ancient age of 30, you can still break into SAS. So I had to tune out the noise. I had a goal. I knew what I wanted for myself. And I did it. And I did it through LinkedIn. I mean, 100% when people say, what can LinkedIn do for you? It changed my life. Um, I yeah. built relationships through LinkedIn. I met people. I leveraged relationships and networked like crazy. And a lot of doors opened for me. So LinkedIn is a very important part of how my life completely changed. So when I heard of employers asking their employees to literally hand Hand over their password and their user ID so the company could post as the employee as if they were the employee. So it's a corporation responding and posting from an individual's page. I mean, I had to just say, 
what the heck is going on here? <laughs> I thought, right. no, this is this is my brand. This is my identity. It's very personal to me. I do talk about, as Trevor said, we've been through a lot. We have a lot of experiences and I share those things on my LinkedIn page. I just couldn't imagine turning my credentials over to any company. So I did make a post. I you know, wanted to know what my connections and followers thought about that. Is this the wave of the future? And 100% everyone said, absolutely, no way. I would not give my employer my credentials if they asked, if they demanded. I would, I would leave that company. And um, fortunately, someone who worked for LinkedIn actually posted the rules of engagement and it is against the rules of engagement. So when you sign up for your LinkedIn account, you take 100% responsibility for anything posted from your page. So I was glad that that's not a thing. Well, you know what? I, I'm just so proud of you for, for putting that out there and owning it and making it clear that like, here's, here's how we're going to do it. Right. And you know, the fact is that that I think we're all inherently trying to do the right thing, you know, even even corporations. But the fact is, is that 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 LinkedIn isn't valuing corporate content right now. Right. right. It, it, mm -hmm. it just isn't. And so yeah. any kind of corporate sourced content just doesn't get play, doesn't get exposure. And so this idea that we can. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so good on well, you, Scarlett. Thank you for telling that story. It's, it's, a, it's an important one to sure. tell. And I, I really wanted to shine some light on it. I'll just say real briefly, I did see the emails and that was their thought was, you know, the email said personal pages of our employees is getting more engagement than we are as a corporation. Therefore, we need your credentials. And I thought, I understand the thought process, but it doesn't work that way. No, no, it doesn't. No, it really doesn't. So good on you. And now we're going to take a couple of minutes to uh, focus on Sam. Now, invited Sam in, you know, I've met Sam, gosh, early on in our uh, in the social Saturday experience and, um, you know, have, have not really engaged with you too much, Sam, but the fact is that I, I love your walk and talk, right? Your, your walk and talk videos are great. And I love this illuminate idea. And so you've got a slide here that I made for you briefly. And I want to speak to that, speak to like what this coaching, what illuminate means and, um, what your experience has been on LinkedIn for the past few months. Yeah, so where the whole idea of Illuminate came is from, um, I've been on this journey to be able to understand my purpose. In fact, um, about two years ago, I came on LinkedIn for, I, I don't even know why, honestly, I logged in that day. Can't even remember, but I was looking to be able to grow my coaching skills, my problem solving skills, so I could find a role at my company. And so I found this cohort, and a part of um, the cohort was to, um, the first part was to create your purpose, a picture of your purpose. In fact, they even have a picture, the picture I drew two years ago because it's so important to me. Um, and from that very first day, they ask you every day to set a purpose, like set, have your purpose set an intention, action, and reflection. And that first day, my intention was to do something that I would normally not say yes to or normally not say no to. And that was posting a video on LinkedIn. And I just described my experience going through the cohort. And it was about 90 seconds. And I was like, well, this is fun. So the next day I did it again and talked about that second day, what my purpose, intention, and action was. And I was like, I could really, I could really do this. I'm kind of enjoying this. And so I just, at that moment, I decided I'm going to continue to do this. And by the end of that week, I was like, I'm going to do this for years. So every day I posted a video about my purpose, intention, and action and reflection. And that was really powerful for me because along the way, I purpose got more clear to me as I kind of walked through into this reflection. I had people who were kind of speaking into my life and world um, meaningfully. And at that point, I finally came down to the point of my purpose being to be a light. And so as I started um, understanding that my purpose was to be a light, then earlier this year, this year, I went to a conference where I was able to share and speak about some of my coaching experiences. But I also, the biggest moment for me was the moment where I was um, sitting down at a table and two gentlemen were speaking and asking us to write down our challenges. And that moment for me, I wrote down, I don't have the confidence to charge for coaching. And that was the tingle moment for me where it was like, you know, where you get that tingle down your spine and it's like, this is something I really have to follow. And so the rest of that conference, I started asking people about coaching and different things. And the next night at the end of the conference, I went back to my room and I, I looked in my email box and I had been uh, anticipating getting an email back for a job opportunity. Perfect fit, same industry, 
doing improvement work. And I thought, oh my gosh, had three great interviews. I'm a sh- uh, I wasn't a shoe on, but I felt really good. And when I got the response, it was like, no, we're stopping the process here. And it was like, wow, this is really, uh, it, it was definitely a hit. But then I thought, wow, what perfect timing to be able to have that moment of understanding what my purpose was and what that looks like. And so that next morning I went out to the beach on Jekyll Island, Georgia, sat there quietly and reflected on what do I want people I work with as a coach to look like? What do I want them to feel like? I want them to feel worthy and valued. And so as I flew home that day, I was reading the book, listening to the book, um, Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. And in that book, she has a quote from Joseph Campbell, which has just blown my mind ever since then. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. And that to this day, is like one of my guiding like lights. Um, and so um, ever since then, I know I needed to start going out there and shining my light and helping people with this, with my, with coaching. And so as I was kind of thinking, okay, what does that look like? Um, I, I'd been like thinking about what would I name this business? I didn't want it to be Sam Morgan consulting. Right, right. Um, I wanted it to be something meaningful. Mm -hmm. old friend of mine used to say the only reason why rock bands or any bands name their name uh, is because it sounds cool, right? I didn't want it to be just something that sounded cool, although I like that. I mean, obviously, I want it to be catchy, but I wanted it to be something meaningful, something that meant something to me and what I would be able to help people with. And so I remember one morning, I woke up about 2 a.m. after kind of like writing things down, doing all these different like free writing activities. It didn't work. And I woke up and it was illuminate. That's what I want to do. That's what I've been experiencing. And that's what I want to do for folks. For them to be able to see the light that's inside of them, the power that they have inside of them, that's what I want to be able to do. And so that's a long way of saying where Illuminate came from. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And, and I think that you know, we can see here the comments over here. Just you know, people are on fire with it, right? It makes sense. It's a, it, it is a, it's one of those things like if it was a snake, how's it go? Snake with a bitch or whatever. I mean, it's like, it's like that. It's like, it's like oh, yeah. Right. It's like, Why didn't I think it, of that one? you know, like oh, sometimes they're just so obvious. They're just like really just right there. And so well done. You know, it's a, it's a fantastic brand and, um, you know, best wishes for you to continue to work on it and build it and all of that. But we're at time. We're actually a little bit over time. We need to get into the heart of the show, which is why everybody's here. Just find out if they have been named a hotness unleasher of the week. <laughs> yeah, indeed. That's Woo. what we got to do. So with that, forever. <laughs> we are going to get started. So, all right. So let's see. I've got Carissa in my upper right. So we're going to start with you, Carissa. Who is your first hotness unleasher of the week? All right. My first hotless unleasher. Drum roll. <laughs> yes. It is Josh Alquist. Okay. I, Mr. Alquist. There we go. I just absolutely love Josh's content. He is always present and delivering value just off the charts. He drops a video, I think, almost every single weekday, at least he has been. I think maybe maybe he paused a little bit this past week or two, but he was dropping a new video with quality content, a teaching tool, a skill, something you can take away and use every single video. He speaks about leadership, his... Um, his little LinkedIn headline says, I help companies increase revenue. He provides sales coaching, leadership development. He's a combat veteran. veteran, And he has been such a huge supporter of me. He's somebody who comes in and comments on my content. And he's not only does he deliver value, but he is just such a kind hearted, giving person. And I adore him. Fantastic. You know, I was I was looking at his. So, so Josh has not really gotten into my sphere yet but you know here we are so it's probably going to happen right um but i was looking at this i love that 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 byline right because bylines are hard you know it's hard to get them just just right i mean i've been working on mine i continue to to work it over and and um i'll speak to that here a little bit later but the i love this i help companies increase revenue and i was looking at that last night i'm like yeah i help companies make more money you know (laughs) it's like i mean that's that's ultimately what these companies want to do and and we as humans i mean at least as capitalists in the United States. I mean, the fact is we, we it's what we want and I, you know, honesty about that, right. Some transparency about that and then backing it up with, you know, like with support and engagement and, you know, exactly. Being, yeah. Just being a real dude. And the, I, this whole fractional notion too, you know um, you know, Tara Trantham is doing that as a legal 
um, resource. And then Neela is doing that as an operational resource. You know, now we got Josh doing it as a, in a fractional way. I think that's really interesting. You know, it, it's just um, it, it 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 brings sort of a new opportunity. You know, and like with you know with what Carla was talking about in terms of these these uh, you know the gig economy, right? That that how we how we can begin to even envision that even broad more broadly than just mm -hmm. driving cars, right? Okay, that's one thing, right? Or you know, cleaning houses, but we can gig, we can, we can fractionalize, you know, virtually any function. So this is great. Thank you for, for bringing Josh to my attention. And uh, yeah, I'm certainly going to follow him and start to engage with this stuff. So fantastic. I also, I also just recommend going back and looking at his videos, his posts, because you will get so much value just from watching those on leadership and sales. I, I mean, he talks about very high concepts, very articulately. So I, right. I recommend checking those out. Fantastic. Can't wait. Okay. Scarlett, you are up. Who is your hot, your first hotness unleasher of the week? All right. My hotness unleasher is drum roll, please. I can't make it sound, but <laughs> Perfect. sound effects, visual effects. I love it. Aaron Wallace. A lot of you probably know Aaron. There he is. First of all, I have to say Aaron is the funniest guy on LinkedIn. And this has been certified by Julie Rader. She has said it's true. Um, I met Aaron six months ago. He was still a full-time teacher trying to transition into SaaS sales. I was working full-time in senior living and trying to transition to SaaS sales. And we connected, had a coffee chat. I just love the guy. He is so down to earth. He lives in Arkansas in the middle of nowhere and SAS literally changed his life. He now is an SDR for Chili Piper. Mm -hmm. He is super active on LinkedIn and he gives back to his community every day. He has so many people reach out to him wanting to know how he landed such a cool job with Chili Piper, first of all, and how he transitioned into SAS. And he holds little coaching groups for people. He'll interact with people in DMs. He just had a coaching group this week where he took open questions for an hour. And I just love the fact that one, he was super successful. He set a goal for himself. He'll tell the story. He waited four months to be hired at Chili Piper and interviewed multiple times, but he knew what he wanted and he stuck with it and he got there and he is showing everyone how it's done. That's fantastic. You know, I want to say too, so I don't know, Aaron, right? I, you can, you can see, if anybody's looking at my screen right now, you can see that uh, he's second connection, right? I, I'm not connected to him. We're going to fix that. That's, that's the first thing we're going to deal with, right? <laughs> but I should also say that while I've never been to Arkansas, um, I am actually a user of Chili Piper. So I, my Infuse Media is a, is a client of Chili Pipers, and we use it all the time. I'm very familiar with how it works. Uh, we, uh, it's, it's deployed as a tool for SDRs primarily. So my, my, my BDR team, so a little distinction there, um, when they book appointments, it automatically feeds into my calendar and, with all kinds of prompts and reminders and all kinds of other great stuff. I love it. It works perfectly. And, and uh, I, I'm a big advocate of, of, of the tool. So yeah, good on Aaron. Well done getting that job and seeing it through. And I, I you know, a little more humor too. I, my jokes don't usually land very well. So, so anybody that can pull that off, hats off to him. So thank you for bringing Aaron to the Hotness Unleashed Squad today. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Scarlett. All right, Sam, on to you. Who do you have as your first Hotness Unleasher of the week? Yeah. So my first Hotness Unleasher is uh, Amira Galani. And um, what I love about um, Amira is, well, first off, she's 17. So that's what like got my attention when I uh, first connected with her. And um, you can see her headline. She's a mindfulness coach. And I'm like, how is a 17 year old like being a coach, like a mind, like a mindfulness coach? And so I took to having um, uh, I think we did like a coffee chat and got to know her a little bit. And I'm like, man, she um, she is like literally um, three times her age, like in terms of when you meet her. And so I have this feature I do every few weeks where I, I work to shine light on folks who are doing great things and improving people's lives. And so I just asked her to come on. And so this week I shared her story and um, encourage you to go back, check it out um, on my CI5 video, but you'll, and so you'll hear 
um, why I just love Amira, and she is really um, she's developing her own program to help people. Um, uh, well, she wants to get in and help folks uh, in coaching with special needs, but she's creating her own program. You can see that she's an aspiring special needs coach, and she coaches um, her peers, basically like high schoolers, junior highers, grade schoolers who are wanting to move forward in their life, maybe have challenges. And they need someone who's going to help them feel rounded. And so I just, <laughs> it blows my mind every time when I've talked to her and just see her that she's 17 and she's just heading into university. Mm. Um, it's ridiculous. It blows my mind. So yeah, definitely connect with Amira. You, you won't be, uh, won't be sad you did. Man, I, I did uh, check out that video of her uh, last night and um, I was just totally blown away. I had never heard of anything called misophonia. Didn't have any idea what that was. Learned about about that and learned, uh, you know. Thank goodness I don't suffer from misophonia that I know of. I mean, maybe I maybe we all do, but I mean, it 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 sounds like you know like something that that is is very is very important to her and um, is something that she you know has figured out how to how to work through and deal with. And you know, in fact, I I bought some. Uh, uh, some noise canceling headphones for one of my kids um, earlier, yeah. like a week ago. And, um, and she's just, she, she, she wears them in school. Like they let her you know wear them. And, and so she doesn't have to take in a whole bunch of extra outside stimulation and it's helping. It's helping her um, to, to stay focused in, in school. And so I imagine that, that, I mean, not, not really having anything intelligent to say other than that about misophonia. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it, it was, it's a new word and a new awareness now. And so, you know, and, and 17 is just, I mean, it's not just off the charts. I mean, I can see that she's connected to Taha Ezi and I was going to say like, Oh yeah, maybe it's a Canadian thing because she's in Canada, he's in Canada and you know, he's a 17 year old guy and he's been around for a while and, and, you know, kicking around and, and what I noticed and, maybe this has been your experience with her too, but that, that these kids are um, like really open. Like they, they, they don't have this idea that they've got all the answers. Do, yeah. Do, I, I really like have, like I've, I've met a handful uh, of um, folks like this, like who are going into university to kind of see some of the things that I'm posting that resonates with them. And then just having conversations with them, just like how sharp they are, how intuitive they are. Um, and how caring they are. They really want to help their peers. And, and so it's just crazy to me because um, I think like um, like Scarlett was talking about, you know, we have some of this, the, the ageism around, but I think that there's definitely some of that uh, here on LinkedIn too. I mean, obviously the core audience is, you know, 25 to 45, 55, whatever LinkedIn says it is. But like when I see people like this that are 17 that are showing up in the way that they are and doing meaningful work, I definitely want to be connected to them and then shine light on them because they're making a real difference and they're going to like, if she's doing this at 17, after she has experience, learns from life, learns from her coaching. I mean, what is she going to do in like five, 10, 20 years? It's ridiculous. That's why like, if I ever hear anybody talking about our youth and like the world's going to hell in a handbasket or whatever, I look at folks like this and I'm like, nah, you need to talk. Yeah. To folks like this. No, no, we're, we're definitely good. All right. Well, thank you for bringing her to the hotness unleash your show. Congratulations, Amira. You are Sam's hotness unle first hotness unleasher of the week. All right, so it's my turn. So, uh, you know, I, I'm sort of in this privileged position, right? Because I get to do this every single week, right? So I can really um, bring up people that that are like immediate and have been, and then I can look back and I can and every so every guest, right, is functionally a hotness unleasher for me. And then everybody I also bring, so I just get to just it's so much fun. Um, all right, so my first hotness unleasher of the week is going to be Jan young all right so i make these carousels with content right and i like to highlight people because i'm really trying to build an audience in and around the go-to-market stack uh, for b2b right well customer success is one of the functions that i focus on and i found jen young somehow right i don't know um we had some co uh, connections in common or something and and of all the people that I that I, I highlighted, Jan reached out and she said, "We should talk. You know, we should. You know, I'm doing this thing with the other guy, and we were, you know, this." And she, and she was like, "Totally spot on, and and right there with, with the types of, of jargon and 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 work that that I kind of live and breathe every day." I was like, "Okay, great." And then I totally spaced it. I like didn't respond to. Her. I just did. I was like, "Oh no, I, you know, we got busy with the show and get busy with everything else, and I don't know, whatever." So, and so I sort of meekly sent her a note. 
uh, Jan, I forgot to, to, can we still, and she's like, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Here's my, get my, get my calendar. And so we got, got on the calendar. We had our, had a few coffee and hit it off, hit it off. Great. And so she invited me to, um, to attend her. She hosts a coffee, uh, uh, not a coffee, uh, uh, office hours. Right. And, and I didn't know what to expect. She said, I'm doing this office hours thing on Tuesday. It was Tuesday this week. And it's a zoom call and she's got like 20 people in this private zoom chat. And I don't know who they were, but it turns out like these are all kind of folks who are getting started in customer success mostly. And, and so she's supporting them and who are trying to figure it out and, and, you know, kind of just invited me to speak into like, what does it mean to be a salesperson and how does that work? And, and what's my role and what are my kind of ideas around it? And, and, and some of my ideas are a little bit kind of, you know, uh, but you know, that, that comes from being old and, and, cranky. But I just wanted to say, you know, when Jan invited me into that, that those office hours, it was a real just mind kind of bending experience for me. And to have a chance to, to speak really honestly and sort of transparently about, you know, the work that I do um, was a real gift. And so she is my first hotness unleasher of the week. Thank you, Jan. All right. So on to the next part of our show, which is our look back section. Okay. So in this part of the show, we're going to say, what did we post or what did we come up to in terms of content um, that made a difference to us? Like that really kind of was significant. So with that, Carissa, you got the stage. All right. I'm so inspired by these hotless, hotness unleashers. I just really want to say that I am so inspired by everybody who has been highlighted today. And in terms of one of my posts, I, I posted just recently, just last week, a post about getting passed over for a promotion and the experience of that and how that felt. And the reason that I'm bringing that post up today is because I felt like I did a nice job of telling a story. And I teach storytelling strategies. I I'm always asking my clients to add more stories, to bring more stories in, to use storytelling techniques. And I realized I'm not doing that as much in my content as I could. And so when I wrote up that post and I shared it and I got some nice feedback from it, it felt like I was really sharing myself. And the experience of that felt so good to share a piece of my life and a piece of my experience in a vulnerable way that that just, it felt good to, to be known and to be seen and to be able to have an impact by being willing to be vulnerable. That was a great post. I, I remember it. I remember it well. And um, it, it, I was just reading this thing. I'm like, how, who, who passes over Chris for a promotion? What, how does that even happen? You know, but, but the way you explained it was, was legit, right? It made sense. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was like, yeah, companies and organizations can get into these kinds of sort of this myopic mindset, but then, but, we don't always know the full story, right? We don't mm -hmm. do our thing and then we kind of have to go with it. But anyway, yes, no, I, I really appreciated that post. And um, did you end up getting a lot of engagement on it? I mean, I, I know, I think I left a comment or, you know, something like I, that. I did, I did get a good amount of engagement on it. Um, and it made me realize too, just how many people need to hear our stories, you know, whatever they are, that people, yeah, yeah, Sam, I see you. Yes, yes, people need to hear our stories. And that when we tell our stories, and this is what I share with my clients, it's not so much like, oh, let me just talk about myself, but it's actually a gift that you're giving when you share your story because you're allowing people to know that they're not alone. And so often with promotions or, or, or a lot of things in the professional world, we don't understand why they're happening. And so it's important to have some tools and skills to, to be able to ask the right questions, to be able to look inside, to have somebody kind of there with you saying, hey, it's okay, let's look at this together. Nice, nice. Well, well done. I really appreciate you bringing that one up today. All right. Uh, Scarlett, what do you got? What, what was your sort of post of the week? Well, it's not a post of the week, but we were asked to think about a post that really had an impact and made a difference for us. So I'm going to go back a little bit in time. Um, I had an interview with a company and as a lot of people, I got the thanks, but no thanks email. We're moving in a different direction. So I made a post on LinkedIn about it. And um, I wasn't being strategic. I was being sincere and genuine. I just shared with my connections that my experience during the interview process. And I said, I had an interview 
And it was different because it was a conversation about work-life balance and what my goals were and what was important to me in a role. And I had an opportunity to interview three different hiring managers within the company and, you know, have a conversation about what role would be aligned for me. And I was sharing simply to let people know, I was seeing a lot of posts about negative experiences with recruiters and hiring managers and people were getting down about the whole interview process. So I wanted to share my experience to say it can look different. And I happened to get 38,000 views on that. <laughs> wow, <post>. that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and the company that had interviewed me and rejected me happened to see the post no. and they reached back out. And the HR manager said, I know we told you the position was closed and that we were going in a different direction, but we've reopened it. How would you feel if we made you an offer? So <laughs> I, I say that post really resonated because I was simply trying to tell my story, as Carissa said. I felt like it was important for people to know there was another side to the interviewing process and it could look different. Little did I know that it would literally change the direct trajectory of my job search because that helped me transition into SaaS. That's how I got my first full-time role as an account executive in SaaS. So um, posting is important. As Darren McKee says, hit that post button. <laughs> There you go. Hit it. Hit it hard. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that one. I, you've, you know, you and I have actually damned about that one too, and and um, I've, you know, I've, I've seen it, and I know Jamie's having a hard time finding it, but it's out there, Jamie. Persist. It'll, you'll, 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 find it. you'll find it. You'll find it. Yeah, Jamie, it's pinned at the top of my um, page. All right. So Sam, what do you got? What was the, what what resonated with you last week? Or, well, or, so, or, yeah. I just got to say, like, I appreciate kind of the theme here that's going on about sharing your story. That's just so, so important, right? Being yourself, showing up. And I think for me, <clears throat> I love to tell stories and I love hearing stories. And I think that's a human thing. And so for me, the, when, when I find when I'm writing stories, the ones that really hit most for me, like when I'm writing them down and I can feel like that tingle, I can feel that, um, like either the tears or the joy or whatever coming up. I'm like, okay, this is something I really... Um, rather than just something I know, like I can write a story, but it doesn't hit me. Like it's not something that's coming from authentically me always. And so from last Friday, um, uh, last week, I kind of talked a lot about folks who might be on the spectrum or folks who are just maybe feel a little different or out of place. And last Friday, I, I shared how um, being different is a superpower. I, I highlighted my, my son, Judah, who's on the spectrum and how like maybe other folks maybe feel like like if they're on the spectrum, otherwise they might feel different, but they're really, um, they're not, it's a superpower. Like it's a gift. And um, that's something we, we talked to Judah about. And that's something that I wanted to like encourage others with. And so being able to share like my son's story, anytime I get to share that, um, because he's just, <clears throat> he means so much to me and being able to support him and see the beauty of who he is. And I want the world to be able to see that. And so, my hope is that other people who maybe have that same experience could be encouraged and know that there's somebody out there that that's advocating for them and is out there to support them in their journey. So that was a, a really meaningful post. Um, and sometimes those meaningful posts, they don't get as much engagement, right? Like they mean, you know, they mean more to you. Um, and so, um, yeah, that, that's true for me. Um, and so uh, that's the, I guess the most meaningful post in, in recent. Awesome. I cannot, I can't wait to read that one. You know, I, you know, I, I have four kids and, you know, they, they're, they're my life's work. Right. And set, but yet I set a hard boundary. Where I don't talk about them because they're, you know, they're, they're their own people. And yeah. so, uh, it, you know, it's, it is hard. It's hard to kind of hold that in. Right. I, I don't, I don't get, to, that's a big part of my story. And so, you don't, you know, unless we're like in a one-to-one -one, basically in real life, it's not going to happen. So um, they, their stories are theirs to tell at this, particularly at this stage of, of their lives. Um, all right, but I did have one post and it's not quite as, it's not storytelling or anything like this, but it's a little bit, I guess. So I was out trying to, trying to flesh out some content of, of, of particular function in the go-to-market stack. And I couldn't find anybody who was actually authoring their own content. Okay. It was just all a corporate rigor. just blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, are you guys kidding me? You're, this is, this is, this is just not how you do it. And <laughs> And so I came up with this, with, and, and, so, and I, was, I was just, because it was taking me a long time to look and look and look and look. And 
it, LinkedIn is just not a very efficient way to try to find, there's no way, to, no good way to surface it. At least that I've figured out yet. So I, I'm just, and, and, and I came up with this thing for some reason. It was like, what's the minimum, what is the minimum amount of work that you could do to have a, uh, a personal brand, right? On LinkedIn, like to just be barely like have a pulse of some kind. And then it dawned on me, MVP, right? So minimum viable product, minimum viable, minimum viable personal brand, MVPB. And I was excited about it. I thought it was a great idea. And and those who, it didn't get a lot of, a lot of exposure, but, but those who kind of got it, got it. And, um, you know, there was a sort of a clever kind of connection, you know, util, you know, sort of co-utilization of, of acronyms and, and, you know, whether I'm right or wrong, it was still just the idea that, that you didn't have to go all in all the time in order to have some kind of a, like a recognizable um, LinkedIn 2.0 uh, presence here on this platform, right? That you really you put a picture in your profile. I mean, I just was running into people who had like something like from like 1975 that didn't even fit or, or some people like you didn't have any, you know, and I mean, not even, I mean, and even if you're not, maybe you're not comfortable with your own image, maybe you can do an avatar and you can do anything that would fit the, the, the screen, something, or just a color for that matter. I mean, something that, that, that fits it. And then, um, you know, post once a week, you know, just that's it. All you gotta do is once a week and then make a couple of comments that aren't just, Congratulations on your new job, right? Um, yeah. I mean, just really, really ultra basic things that would take you literally maybe 20 minutes a week to do, right? And and that I think is the MVPB that we're talking about. And I'm going to run with that for a little while. I'm going to make a carousel out of it. I'm going to kind of expand on it for a little bit because I I do think that that people get a sense of like if I'm not doing all of the stuff, I'm not going to do any of the stuff. And I just don't think that's true. I think that there's a there's a there's a really broad um, swath that, that we can work with and that folks can um you know can just can just take little baby steps and we can get to know them and and maybe they'll 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 begin to find their voice so with that we need to move on quickly because we're running out of time so we're going to move into the second round of hotness unleashers all right carissa you are up who is your second hotness unleasher of the week my second hotness unleasher is d powers her last name is perfect because she is so powerful at what she does. She went from pouring coffee to C-suite ex for C-suite execs to preparing them for behavioral interviews. And she is just a wonderful, intelligent, talented human being who is very good at supporting and giving to others on LinkedIn. She's built a lovely community and presence on LinkedIn. And she also, um, what was the other thing I wanted to say about her? She's, she just has an incredible way of engaging. She's funny and she's silly, but she's incredibly professional. Oh, and, and she can prepare somebody for an interview techniques that they can take away for their whole life in two hours. I mean, this woman is absolutely on fire and D powers is powerful. Awesome. She's incredible. Well, I, I have reached out to her to connect as well. At least I think I did. Um, I was a little bit sort of a little bit crazy last night. So um, the if I if I I'll double check, I'll make sure that I'm connected to every single hotness unleasher here because that sounds fantastic, right? I mean, who doesn't want this kind of person in their network to you know to to build with? And um, yeah, thank you so much for for bringing her to the table. I can't wait to get to know her uh, going forward. Awesome. All right, Scarlett, who do you have as your second hotness unleasher of the week? My second hotness unleasher of the week is Megan Glenn. And so, um, as I mentioned, I'm new to my role with Arise. I'm also new to the CX space. So I immediately began looking for people that I could learn from. And Megan popped up to the surface immediately. Um, she is all about transforming the customer experience. And she has a tremendous background. Um, she's a big deal. She has done a lot of research in the subject. She's um, been guests. She's 
spoken about the subject, but her posts are very down to earth. And that's what really resonated with me. I thought she has got the background, she's got the know-how, but she talks about things that are passionate, that I'm passionate about, transforming the CX experience, supporting women, DEI. Um, her company and Verge is all about improving the CX experience from beginning to end for the customer. So those are all things that I love. I've learned so much from her and I want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one coffee chat with her because I, she's someone I just know that I would love as soon as I got to meet her. It's so great. You know, I mean, obviously you can see that I'm not connected to her either. I mean, just such a treat for me that I get to get to know all these people and invite them into my world and, and get to share these experiences with you. And, and man, I can't wait. I mean, she just sounds fantastic and I'm well done. I mean, what else can I say? I, I, I can't wait to, to get to know, get to know Megan. It's, it's going to be super fun. So, um, perfect. Okay. Sam, who is your second hotness unleasher of the week? Yeah, so my second hotness unleasher is Christos Angela Dacus. I think that's how he pronounces his name. I should know because I do, um, <clears throat> how I met Christos is through uh, a LinkedIn cohort uh, of folks who are trying to like grow their businesses with uh, Darren Gibb. And so we met through that. And he is a, um, like a, a coach for solopreneurs and entrepreneurs. And of course, me starting up my business, we were kind of talking, we did like a coffee chat. And he was like, hey, would you like to explore working together? And of course, us being in the cohort of like learning how to sell, like I knew this was <laughs> kind of the, the, the line. But we met and it's just it, he is um, he's very uh, like transparent and vulnerable. I remember like when my the second time we met, um, I shared with him, I was like, hey, I just don't believe anything you're sharing with me. Like I was basically like very vulnerable. And he was like, that's cool, man. Like I appreciate it. So it was a very safe space. Um, but he just took it and then was like, all right, let's see, how can we work together? Um, and every week we meet, he's always very like, what do you want to get out of this time working together? And every night I check in with him, I send him a voice note, I send him a picture of what I've done. And he always has some, like every night, he always has some insight or encouragement to help me. And I'm me being a coach. I'm like, oh, well, you know, like, what are you going to offer? Actually, every night he comes up with something for me to like, oh, my gosh, I didn't think of that. Like, that's the thing I need to, to check or think about. And so, like, and he's just such a, a like, a, a, a kind person, too, and very sharp and very honest with his experience. He's out of Athens. And so that's why I put he's one of my top five favorite Grecians of all time. <laughs> he's just, he's just um, like, such a, uh, yeah, just a genuinely kind dude smart dude. So if you're like an entrepreneur, solopreneur, who's like, like overwhelmed, you're losing sleep, you don't know how to like kind of get a hold of things, you want to talk to Christos, and he will definitely help you get grounded and move forward in the right direction. Awesome. Now, has he one of the things I'm kind of hearing you say kind of in the back of my mind was that his coaching style is actually impacting your coaching style. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Um, like one of the things that I do is I, I, I practice daily coaching with the folks that I work with. And one of the things that he helped me do was because I have a, like a, a system or a program that I'm, I'm working to develop and use. And he was like, and I was like finding some frustrating times with a client. And he was like, well, you need to be like basically holding it open. And I was like, I don't know if I can do that. I'm a little afraid. And so I tried it. And it actually was, it worked, like it helped, like, and she got to the place where I want, my client got to the place where I was hoping she would get to without me having to like force her into a box. And so that was like super helpful for me because I'm a very like process. I need things like formatted. And he was like, you need to let go of that, like have your process, but also you're here to, you're here to serve the client. Your process isn't, isn't, you know, you're here to serve the client. The process isn't what you're trying to serve. And that was just such a mind blow for me. And so that's the kind of stuff working with him that you get. Nice. Nice. All right. Well, I obviously I wasn't connected with him either. So I wasn't seeing his content and uh, now I will, right. I'm going to reach out to that guy and get connected and um, you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens. All right. So my second hotness unleasher of the week, and this has been a long time coming to be honest, right. I, I have been meaning to bring this guy up for a while and it's Mike Phillips. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, Mike, you got to know Mike. I mean, Mike, I got to tell you, is the, if, if not the, at least one of the most sincere people that I have met to date on this platform. So I got to know Mike um, actually before Social Saturday. 
Um, and it was, I was out cruising around on these various marketing posts and stuff. And, and I noticed that there weren't a lot of sellers uh, who were giving feedback and, and engaging with the marketers on, um, on, on their, uh, you know, on their experiences. And, and I called it out. I said, where are the sellers? And Mike said, Hey, I guess what I, I used to be a seller and, and kind of still am sort of, but not really. And now I'm a marketer. And so we kind of bonded over that. Like he knew what it was like. And, and he, he takes this whole marketing muscle thing seriously. So he's, he's actually got his office is, is, is like his home gym. And, and he did this whole workout of the day thing where he named all these people who were um, like, he named a workout of the day after, after various people. <laughs> It was so great. It was a video series that he did. And I got to be one of them, right? I got to, he named me as one of his workout of the day people. And, and I just, I was like, oh, wow, dude, that is so, such a great thing. And I, I felt so honored and felt so uh, just cared for uh, by that. And, and in terms of the content that he puts out there, it's, it's, it's very, it's, 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 it's deeper than you, than most, Right. It, it, he takes it to another level. He, he does a lot of sort of metaphors, um, very focused on growth. He's 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 not like a big I mean, sometimes there's some funny stuff. You get some laughs in there, but mostly it's just super grounded. And it's it it talks just about, OK, what do we need to do to, to grow? And his whole brand is built around this whole strength training thing, getting stronger all the time. So um, love Mike. Just one of my great friends here, and I've been meaning to call him out for a while now. So, Mike, man, you are just week after week after week, hotness and leisure for me. So, uh, with that, uh, we are going to move to what are we looking forward to next week, right? I mean, it's uh, we're 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 in the fall, you know. I mean, we're getting excited about some some stuff coming up, and so I want to hear from you. Um, what what do you got cooking, and where? You know, what's, what, do you, what are you excited about? All right, Krissa, you are on stage. Sure. Well, what have I got cooking? Professionally, I have lots of things, lots of irons in the fire that I'm excited about. I'm very excited about my event coming up and doing more lives. I've been doing more lives on, on LinkedIn and all social media platforms. But personally, I am treating my husband to a pedicure this afternoon. And that is something I am very excited about because he nice. likes getting his toenails painted. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. That's, that's just, that's just great. You know, I, You're speechless. I, 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 I'm a little bit, I, I, a little, just what's in the back of my mind is that I've, I've, I've gotten my, my, my toenails painted once or twice and it's, it's like, it's, they're like get tight or something. And I, I don't, I don't know. It, it's not a, like a, like the paint or something. It, it, I get, just not, I'm not used to it. Let's just not your let's, thing. Let's he just loves it. That. The first yeah, yeah. time I took him for a pedicure, uh, the woman rolled by with her cart of nail polish and she, he said, wait, is that included? <laughs> yeah, oh he's like, oh, I want it. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, have, have a great time with that, and I'm I'm gonna sign up for your for your live event. I can't wait. That'll be great. Um, it's a great time of year for me, and um, yeah, I, I just anticipate learning uh, so much. So we're looking forward to your promotions and, and and all that good stuff. Okay, Scarlett, you're up. What are you looking forward to? Well, professionally, it's a great time because I've been in my role a month, so I'm starting to get my feet underneath me, and we're still building out our team. We've got three new people that start on Monday, so I always love when new people join the team, and we are in a startup environment, so there's just lots of energy. It's super exciting, lots of fun, and we're having conversations about how we can grow our division, so that's a great time. Personally, um, I'm in Orlando, Florida, so there is no fall or winter for me. It's pretty much the same 12 months out of the year. Um, um, I am a little jealous of people that, well, but I love seeing the pictures on LinkedIn about the fall and the leaves changing color. So I'm planning some travel. I want to go up the coast to North Carolina, um, check out the Wilmington area. So I'm in the process of planning a trip to that area. So good things happening. Fantastic. I'm, I, you know, we're, I'm in the Pacific Northwest and, uh, you know, with Sam, I don't know about you, Sam, but I mean, we haven't had rain in like three months. I mean, it's been it's been forever. And it's, you know, I posted a picture yesterday of, of, you know, my dog looking out at the park and I was like, Oh yeah, that yellow patch, that's the park. That's the grass. That used to be grass. I mean, it's just like dormant city and it's October. I mean, halfway through October it's, it, it, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a drag. So we have fall, but it's really dry out here in the, in the, in the Pacific Northwest right now. And there's just continual smoke and all that stuff. So yeah, North Carolina sounds great. I mean, even, I mean, I know Orlando is just 
just palm trees and stuff. But um, <laughs> <laughs> if anyone has any tips, uh, things I should definitely be sure to check out in the Wilmington area as I'm heading my way up the coast from Orlando to Wilmington. So, them what, now, them. so where is Wilmington in the, because I, I think in North Carolina is a sort of this, like a Lego brick, right? It's kind of long and skinny, right? So where, where is it like relative? So Charlotte's kind of down the bottom and then Nashville's over on the left and where's Wilmington? Not exactly. I think your geographical knowledge is a little challenged, but Wilmington, okay. is, it's it's about an hour north of Myrtle Beach. If you know where Myrtle gotcha. Beach is on the coast yeah, of yeah. South Carolina, Wilmington's about an so hour north there. of there. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Um, gotcha. 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 And then just north of Wilmington are a lot of little uh, port cities like mm. Edenton and New Bern and tiny little specks on the map. But I love to just get out and drive and discover places that I consider you know, I found them. They weren't there until I, I found them. So I love doing that. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Have a great time. All right, Sam, what are you cooking up this week? Yeah, I'm just continuing to have, love having conversations, like posting the stories, sharing and talking to the folks um, and helping shine the light. That's what I always love doing. Um, and yeah, seeing, seeing how I can help folks and serve them. And then, um, or personally, like weekends are always fun for me because Jude and I, I, I brainwashed him into being a soccer fan. So we will be enjoying some soccer uh, this weekend. Um, Manchester United plays tomorrow. So we'll watch that game and uh, we'll just be enjoying that. And um, off LinkedIn tomorrow on Sunday for my coach, he is like, we need to have some space and time to connect with our family, recharge and do that. So definitely um, looking forward to that as well. Nice. Nice. Okay, great. I, I, you know, when the kids get a little older, um, it, it's, I'm like, I kind of weird space right now. So, you know, when they're, when they're teenagers, um, at least in my opinion is that I need to be around all the time, mm. right? but, but we're not necessarily together all the time. So you see me on LinkedIn all the time because I'm literally in my house all the time, but, but they're just in their bedrooms and stuff, you know? So it's like, I have to be close, but not, like it's, it's just this, this is the season of life that I'm in. And, um, I, you know, I take it very seriously that I got to be around, um, uh, but not necessarily in their space. So that's, yeah. that's, that's my world. Um, the, so for me this week, all right, so we're going to have a hotness on this year, episode number 10 be next week. And, you know, I, for the life of me, I can't remember who my guests are next week. So we'll be posting that soon. Um, we're fully booked out through November 19th. I'm excited about that. And then we'll, what I'm really wanting to do, and I'm hopeful that we can get enough people that are available, is on Thanksgiving Saturday to actually use Zoom to host a kind of a big, like, you know, all for one kind of thing. And, and then I'm going to, I've decided that I'm just going to, I'm going to take a little break. Uh, we're going to, we're going to wrap the season, the Hotness Unleash Your Show, and I'm um, going to take, you know, take the, uh, Take the holidays, uh, you know, between, you know, until, you know, sometime next year, uh, maybe we'll restart it. Maybe, you know, pick up some skills somewhere else and, um, and, and, you know, call it a day on this, on this particular show. So we're fully booked up until the, the end of the season. And I don't know for anybody that wanted to get on the show and you didn't, um, you know, let me know and, you know, we'll get you kind of queued up for, for the next round. But, you know, for now, I'm it's important to me to kind of take a break and to work on some other projects um, you know, after Thanksgiving and, and, you know, honor that, honor that, uh, that need for me. And as far as, um, actually, um, you know, most of next week goes, I gotta say, thank goodness I got these vaccines done with, holy crap, last night sucked. <laughs> I mean, yesterday was just awful. I, I wouldn't, so yeah, I, I got COVID flu and shingles, uh, vaccines on, on, um, Friday, you know, Thursday morning, Thursday, yeah, Thursday morning. And then so by Friday, I, I was demolished yesterday. I didn't know if I was going to show up, be able to show up today. Seriously. And last night was a joke. So um, I'm feeling pretty good now. Like it's finally worked its way out of my system. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Uh, but, I, but apparently getting shingles is, is far, far worse. So um, at least that's over with now and I don't have to worry about it. And uh, yeah, I have a little bit more energy. So I got to make up a day that I lost uh, yesterday. Uh, so I'll be working on that and in general, just kind of getting ready for, uh, for episode 10 next week. So with that, we are, you know, we're done. We are out of time. We are at 59 minutes. So gang, I want to just say thank you for showing up today. I've really thoroughly enjoyed getting to know y'all better. Um, you know, this is a four for one V coffee, right? 
And you guys are the best. I, I love having you here. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. So everybody here who showed up in the comments, thanks so much for joining us. I will go back and listen to the show and, you know, chime in where I can. And uh, have a great Saturday, everybody. Take care. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank Saturday. you.